Okay, hey there, welcome to uh, Market Fakers. We have a new guest today or uh, partner or whatever you wanna call it. And, uh, but first, as usual, our disclaimer with yet another, uh, another version on it. And we'll uh, show that to you right now. Okay, so don't listen to anything we say. You are guaranteed to lose money if you do. Version two, is everything stated here is the opinion of the commentator that is not meant as financial advice. No financial advisor relationship is created. Number three, any market opinions, predictions, conspiracy theories, religious commitments, or relative value mean reversion forecasts are as of the exact moment they are given and may change seconds later based on market conditions or the moods of my guests. In other words, by the time you see this, the ideas are already stale and should not be used to inform any of your investment decisions. All right, and here we go. So I wanna introduce uh, Thomas Huber. He is one of our, um, uh, he, he, works in, he works in my office. He's our uh, head of client service, but that's uh, not to be taken uh, here as anything important because we're talking today strictly about one topic and that is GameStop. What happened today, Thomas? Well, first of all, thank you for that warm welcome. I'm happy to be here on Market Fakers. Um, well, so I just got an alert on my phone. Uh, we were talking at the market close, like we do sometimes when we're just shooting the shit a little bit. But today we don't uh, have any beer, so it's not as interesting. Uh, yeah, and uh, <laughs> I got an alert. GameStop was up 100% in the last five minutes and another 100% after hours. And I think it's calmed down a little bit. Maybe it's seventy percent after hours as of uh, five seventeen, right? Wednesday the twenty fourth. In case this is released at a later date. Now, weren't you uh, weren't you telling me that one of those one of those uh, uh, at some point to be to be indicted stock promoters was jamming the stock up in the last five minutes? <laughs> well, so Dave Portnoy, okay, okay. Like L. Prez. Yeah, the leader of Barstool and the Barstool Bros, and he calls himself Davy Day Trader. Okay. Um, he went live, right? So I got a notification. He's live five minutes before the bell. Okay. And he's saying, what the hell's going on? I got to buy GameStop and back in diamond hands, all the Reddit bro slang is totally live. And he also holds in his hand, like I have this pen, he holds in his hand a green hammer and he slams it down because green hammer, things are going green, things are going up. Right. Okay. And while he's playing this, the white stripes are blasting in the background. So it was the perfect scenario to rile up everybody. Um, but I, I mean, if, if, if we should exclude him from the to be indicted crowd because uh, he has a disclaimer just like ours. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but even if he has the disclaimer and he's selling stock as he's jamming it up with his voice, that's illegal. Like you can't do that. <laughs> right. So, so like you've got, oh, and speaking of which, let me fully disclose my position in GameStop. <laughs> I actually have one, which I put on after the stock went, like was on the way down, but I knew all the options market makers were basically all covering or had to cover. So I sold 800 strike calls and I also sold 10 strike puts. Right. And, and when you said that to me 15 yeah. minutes ago, I said, all right. Um, can you say that in English? Like, what does that actually mean? <laughs> yeah. So if the stock goes up, so I have, I'm short five, 800 strike calls. If the stock goes above $800 for every dollar, it goes above 800. I lose $500 because I have five things. So it, at the current market cap of GameStop, I'm sorry, at the close was $6 billion. If the stock goes to $800 a share, the market caps rough, roughly $50 billion. Okay. If they just, if, if the idiots are out there buying more of this stock and they, and the company is too stupid to print a bunch more stock to give them, they, it could, there's no limit to how high it could go. I mean, you know, Bitcoin has a market cap of a trillion. So if, if $10 billion worth of Reddit people decide to buy and all their purchases together add up to 10 billion, this stock will have a hundred billion dollar market cap and my calls will be worth, uh, I'll be, you know, uh, be, I'll be sitting on a $400,000 loss. And then my question to myself is, am I at, at a $400,000 loss, am I willing to sit on it and, and wait for it to come back? 
or will I be sitting there at a four hundred thousand dollar loss, going, okay, now the stock is uh, sixteen hundred dollars a share. What if it goes to eight thousand dollars a share? Now I'm at four million bucks, and I'm not willing to sit on that loss. So, so I was like, what is the right number? Of, I have to be short some of these calls because it just does look ridiculous. But I have to be short an amount that's small enough that almost no matter what happens, I won't I won't cover my short. Right, and right. my short only kicks in. And 800 bucks a share, right? I mean, <laughs> which which it never got to to begin with, um, and uh, uh, you know, and and for that I got paid for that combo I did. I got paid like uh, 13 or 14 dollars when I did it. So if GameStop goes to zero, I'm still profitable because I get paid. I got paid 14 bucks to sell 10 puts, which means I'm willing to buy the stock at at least 10 bucks, no matter how how far down it goes. And since stocks actually can't have a negative price the way oil futures can. Because stocks are about about um, immediate delivery, not future delivery. Um, actually, I guess there is a way that if nobody wanted to settle stock, but there's no cost to buying a stock other than the price. Right. Uh, there, there is with there is an actual cost to taking delivery of oil because you have to put it somewhere and store it. Yeah. Well, so I mean, here's we're talking in huge numbers and yeah, yeah, yeah. talking you know complex short. Yeah optioning of things but the 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 reason why it's so risky and the reason why this thing happened in the first place is because when you hold something it can only go to zero right so you're you can only lose a hundred percent it's on the way up go to infinity yep right but when you when it, it can go up forever so right. and as i talked in about infinity. in a previous one it's not only that it can't go to infinity it's every time it goes up and it goes against you you have to write a check for more right so if a stock goes down and you're not, you didn't borrow money to buy the stock. If you, if you bought a stock for a hundred, for whatever, you put a hundred dollars into a stock and that stock goes to being worth, now it's only worth 50. No one's coming to you and say, pay me 50. You already paid the hundred, you're all in. If you short the stock at a hundred and it goes to 150, you actually have you know 24 hours to come up with 50 bucks and put it in so that you can just stay in the position. Right. One thing that a lot of short sellers do, especially the big, um, the big uh, uh, long short kind of quantitative funds do, is they actually all their position size are, are measured in percent of the underlying um, asset. So what they'll do is, let's say they decide they're going to be short 0.5 percent of their portfolio in some stock in you know Microsoft. Well, if Microsoft goes up 10 percent, now it just went to being short point. Five five percent. So what they have to do is actually have to buy a little bit when it goes, um, when it goes up. Uh, whereas on the long side, if this if it goes if it goes up, they actually sell a little bit, right? And same thing if you're short and the stock goes down and they're trying to stay at the same weight of 0.55 percent, of 0.5 percent, they their weight went down because they're short less of it because it prices or the value is less. So they actually have to short more to stay in the same position as a percentage of all their assets. So there's some really funny things that happen with, with short side uh, positions, even at this very large, extremely diversified, you know, uh, quantitatively based long short positions. So it's, it's fascinating what it drives around the market. And that, that's why, like I said, losses are potentially infinite. Right. Well, what I thought was also um, insightful, what you said is when I, we were talking before, I was like, Okay, so you mean you're in trouble if this thing hits twenty four hundred dollars? Like it's not hitting twenty four hundred dollars? And you said, no, 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 no. This is a cryptocurrency. <laughs> yeah, it's like a cryptocurrency, right? If we and you probably have to think of it in those terms if you want well, to adjust your risk. Well, right normally, away. what when what makes shorting stocks safer than shorting something like the a cryptocurrency is that there's limited supply of a cryptocurrency. So as long as people are willing to buy, the price just goes up. Uh, with things like stocks, I mean, Wall Street has an amazing printing press. It is way better than the Fed's printing press. And the more people want to throw into stocks, Wall Street will just come up and make stocks. They'll make a stock that like holds sand as an asset and mm -hmm. screw you for being dumb enough to buy stocks. But we're just <laughs> going to keep making more of them, right? And it's this only thing that's similar in the cryptocurrency world would be people would just come up with a new coin and yeah, people will buy it, you know, like. That's the closest thing that cryptocurrency has to that, but any one cryptocurrency with a limited supply really could go up, up. 
And that's why I keep looking at GameStop and I keep thinking, you know, the why aren't they printing more of this if I were the GameStop people? And I know they just, the CFO and CEO just left, so maybe they will do that. Um, but one of, the, one of the press releases I read was that they were, or an interview, I think it was, that they did not actually issue more stock last time during the last run up because they were, they had, apparently they had inside information or something. They, they hadn't released that information to the public, so they couldn't then go and sell stock while information was pending. That's also illegal. Right. Which AMC did, which probably saved AMC. Well, yeah, well, AMC, AMC did, and they released all the information. And then also one of their owners of convertible stock converted the bond, convertible bonds, converted the bonds, which means they turned the bonds into stock and then immediately sold the stock. So that also created more AMC supply uh, to fill up all those happy people buying it. And, you know, so even yeah. there, like, there's more shares of, of AMC in existence now than there was a year ago. Um, so even AMC at the same price is actually worth more as a company than it was in January of 2020 before COVID. So um, that's why AMC blows my mind. Like you're basically, AMC says more people are gonna go to the movies over the next three years than ever went to the movies in the three years before COVID. By a lot, not just by a little bit, by a huge amount. Or they're gonna be able to charge three times as price for the tickets. Popcorn's gonna be 85 bucks a, a bucket. You know, right. While is. every single Warner Brother movie is going to be <laughs> yeah, Max, yeah. while no one right. is going to movie theaters, right. everyone just built home theaters that have the media. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I look at the TV I bought during COVID. I mean, it's insane. So, like, it's <laughs> I'm an 86 inch TV. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, so, watching movies in pajamas is, is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, yeah, and it's challenging. I don't have to hire a babysitter. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's it's um it's something else what's going on. So I, I think that was fun to think about the risk here. Um and what else? Do you have a position in GameStop for full disclosure? Uh, I have nothing to disclose. I have no GameStop. I have no AMC. I have, <laughs> okay. I, I have no meme stocks. Okay. I had AMC by accident is a, uh, in, in, a, in a basket I bought of all the stocks that were going to do well in a, in a, if a vaccine suddenly came out sooner than everybody thought. And we bought this basket back in, um, I can't remember the exact days, but it was, it was during the summer. And it was like, oh, what if a vaccine comes out in you know, in September, October, way sooner than everybody thinks. And, and this thing's over. So I bought the basket then and we were kind of had like the remnants of the basket left. And I looked up one day and was like, why is that, you know, how did I get this? You know? Right, but you yeah. and everyone with, you know, whatever you want to call it, that snapback trade, yeah. right? Yeah. Saw what happened and sold into it, right? So it's almost like nobody uh, uh, with a true strategy uh, is yeah. in AMC anymore or GameStop or whatever. It's not. Yeah, well, that's the thing that worries about. Yeah. And that's the other thing that worries about GameStop could actually really rally like nuts. And here's why because all the sellers that were long term holders of GameStop are out. Right. Exactly. Anybody who exactly bought I mean. fundamental yeah. reasons, they're out. Right. And who could, who's a, who's a, you know, um, a relatively long term holder. So I'm like, who's left to buy it? It's just the Reddit people and the insiders, I guess. You know, so. The insiders can't sell. And then the question is, do all these executives that just left, could they make some stock? And the company's got to print some stock. They got to make something for, they issue a convertible bond. If they issue a convertible bond, that puts pressure on the stock because hedge funds buy the convertible bonds, then they short the stock to hedge the convertible bond because of convertible right. bond. Well, this is the other thing we should talk about, right? Because now what's happening right now, if you are an insider, or even if you're not, even if you're Joe Blow, who bought this thing at six bucks and it winds up rallying to a couple hundred dollars. And you look at your balance sheet and your balance sheet, when you open your E-Trade or Fidelity says, holy smokes, it says I have $2.4 million and I'm a bartender. Like this is yeah. insane. Um, it's going to be a crushing blow when this comes down hard. And we talked offline once before about not just that part, but along the way, it gets worse. And the way that you explained how it played out uh, was really fascinating. Do you remember what you said there, where it was like, it, it's it, it's almost that um, mouse clicking the button, getting the dopamine hit thing, but but then it goes to uh, the success that a lot of these- Oh, oh here's what I about this. Yeah, so- It falls we... in half and they double down. Yeah, yeah, they and did eventually. This. Yeah, yeah. Go so, ahead. You, you okay, explain yeah, because it was good. So, so this all starts with the a mouse. If you put a mouse in a cage and there's a little button that they hit, and they can go over the button and get some cocaine. They, they do that because they get the dopamine high. And what happens is if you take the, 
the 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 dopamine producing object, the drugs or whatever, away from them, they still keep hitting the button till their hands bleed. You know, like they're just hoping maybe it'll come out. So what I what happens in the way that people who are have had an experience of the bartender watching their two thousand dollars turn into one hundred and fifty thousand, and then go back down to thirty thousand, let's say, or two thousand, is that when it goes back, when you get another, I'm calling these the suckers rallies. They get these rallies in a bear market they jump in with more than they were ever in before. So they'll actually take the 2000 they started with that's now say went, was worth 150, went down to 30, and they'll go borrow money against their house as the stock price falls to double down and now buy twice as many shares, but now they're paying $30,000 for them yeah. for the second lot. So they're buying far fewer shares and now they're and then all that stock needs to do is go down by 20% and they're completely wiped out their starting stake plus the new money they put in. And so this is the, and, and, and this is the, and then the only time they give up is when they run out of money. And this is how these, these manias end is with a whole lot of people going completely bankrupt and, yeah. and, and to where they don't have anything left to put in on this cycle of like each, each up move. They remember what it was like to have $200,000 in their account, having never had more than 2,000. Right. And, and so they think they can get that back. And that's the high they're chasing. It sounds a lot like a drug addict chasing their memory of their first high. You know, like uh, that you hear about. Yep. So, yeah. It's the thing awesome. is, and, and what's remarkable is I don't think that there's a dollar amount, like a threshold of, of, what, of where that is. I think it's a relative thing, right? If you see overnight your net worth number, whatever it might be, whether it's a thousand bucks or a million bucks, uh, uh, 10x overnight in one of these GameStop things. No one is immune to that, no matter what the, the, the dollar is, right? So to add or take away a couple zeros on whatever that example is, and uh, you know, it affects everybody, anyone who's even near this stuff. And no, it, we've never been um, uh, in a place where it is this accessible and this uh, uh, widely played where, uh, I mean, there is just no way that this can end, I don't think, without some people holding this bag, which is yeah, growing and look growing. At this. Here's the five-year chart. Jeez. Yeah, it's just something else. I mean, people got to got to get in. It's, into, it's, and then this is what I like to, I go right away, I look at this market cap number, right? $6 billion. You know, they make, they're worth $6 billion. What are they doing to be worth $6 billion? I jump to this screen. And all this stuff exists in Yahoo Finance and Google Finance. You can find this at all the broker sites too. So I just happen to be using Bloomberg. But here they are. They're you know seven billion revenue, eight billion. Then they're dropping in revenue. Is that really worth it? What it's worth? And then I'm buying for my six billion dollars, one point four billion in profits that are falling. What's the right number? I don't know. That's then that's gross profits. So it's it's these are this is where we always run when we when we look at these things. So. Oh. Yeah. So instead of the uh, in, in, instead of the mouse clicking the thing for yeah. for whatever that dopamine hit is, it, it's easy to imagine the twenty year old clicking refresh on fidelity with a jewel in his mouth. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, what are we gonna talk about next time? I don't know. Let's see what's happening next time. Let's see what happens. We'll do. I, I mean, I'll keep talking about GameStop, and maybe we'll talk about how I covered part of my my short calls position because I freaked out that this went up. Well, oh, okay. here's something. Okay, so today is um, what day? February 24th. Today's the 24th. Yeah. And right now, Bitcoin is at $48,500. What do we think it's going to be a month from now? 48500 And then that's the easiest prediction to make, right? Because on average, yeah. let's say we're there. Um, I, I, yeah, Bitcoin's a funny one. Okay, I'll give you my quick Bitcoin trading strategy. Okay, this, this is a trading strategy only to be used with an amount of money you would otherwise take to a casino and gamble with. Or I'd literally still, not in, I mean, just that. in terms of like, you know, I don't want yeah. you to go and think you're investing in Bitcoin instead of stocks because Bitcoin doesn't produce dividends, stocks do, they make stuff. So I'm always, I'm always in pro stocks over Bitcoin to just put that in. But there is a, a feature that, that goes back to China, um, Japanese uh, candlestick charts. These are uh, charts formations. Uh, back, it goes back to the 500 AD when the first guy came up with the idea of, of making charts and analyzing them and have, seeing if they could predict the future of prices of rice in Japan. Okay, 
And pretty much from then all the way forward, there's this human reaction to things falling by half and then stopping. So if you have an asset that has no real intrinsic value other than just how much people might want it, it's often good to buy it once it's dropped by half. And then you sell it when it's gone up either kind of five eighths to five eighths of its old high. So you buy it at half of the old high, sell it at five eighths of the old high. That's a strategy people often do. So that would be one interesting one. You could sit there, wait for that drop by one half. The other move that things tend to make is one half of the last big move. So you kind of take the, the low to the new high, and then as it's dropping, look at half that distance. And that's, a, that's another place where people will go in and get these things. Right. Half the distance, right there to Lincoln's tie. But assume it starts up here at the sword. <laughs> right, on your painting, right? Yeah, on your yeah painting exactly, behind. exactly. Yeah. I, well, all right. We'll, we'll talk more about this. I'll get some, I'll give you some more formations of stuff whose intrinsic value is 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 irrelevant to the price moving. And like, all right, my yeah. prediction is uh, a month from now, so the end of March, we'll have a post. We'll have a March Madness call. How about that? Because okay. you do the betting for March Madness. Okay. Um, or I should say, you have stories of old Wall Street doing the betting. For yeah, the yeah. Well, no, I was involved in those. Uh, you know, I've statute and, and, and that'll be fun to talk about. So on the gambling laws, and uh, I can, you know, say that now. Uh, but uh, okay, so what's your prediction? Twenty-eight. So 28. it's at forty-eight. I say twenty-eight. Okay, and I say forty-eight. <laughs> like, all right, good. Then we we we, have, we got a market. We'll, we'll all see. Right. What all right, all right. See everybody next time. I'll have an additional disclaimer item uh, that we'll come up with that while will be useful and yet hopefully. Uh, somewhat humorous. So that's it. Thank you.